Property Mortgage. Today, I'm joined with Michael Ice from Ice Home Inspections. Uh, did I get the title right there, Michael? Is it is it uh, Ice Home Inspection? Uh, it is. It's just Ice Inspections. Uh, ice Inspection. Okay. But... Sorry about that. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, That's quite all right. Uh, yeah. So Michael's going to share with us some tips on how to get the biggest bang for your buck when listing your home, when you're trying to sell your home and how a pre-listing inspection can help you to do that. So Michael, share with us if you could some of, of your insights. Uh, some of my insights, you know, start with some, just kind of some conditions that might appeal to everybody. Uh, so you, you're going to sell your home. Almost all homes have deficiencies, especially the older the home is and the more homeowners have had it and worked on it. You know, we start seeing uh, some things that, you know, aren't necessarily consistent with current standards. And so you have a small amount of money because you're probably looking at putting a down payment down on something else and you're tied up and everybody you're paying. And so now we just have this little bit of money and we're going to sell our house and we really want to just get the best bang for our buck. Mm -hmm. You have an option to bring in a home inspector to come in and give you an evaluation of your property, uh, a non-emotional, unbiased, you know, here it is because the inspector sees it just as sticks and bricks. And then that inspector, if he's so inclined, this is what we do, uh, can advise you on the things that he sees that you may or may not want to address before the, the potential next inspection from your buyer. Something, something as simple as a home that was built in 1983 uh, doesn't have ground fault protection within six feet of the water sources, sinks, okay. not toys, things of the sort. And well, now that's a requirement. We've evolved as an industry and we found that there's higher levels of protection that we can offer occupants. And the people that move into this house likely are gonna request that that gets done. Well, that's a fairly inexpensive fix. So why don't we just take care of that now? get it done and because you're probably going to end up doing it either way or giving a concession. And that all goes through a negotiation process and to and fro and back and forth. And uh, we can just get that done today. Uh, and then maybe, you know, maybe we find something that's a, a, a little more costly. Like uh, we say, Hey, you know what? That furnace is pretty old. That is not deficient. It's heating the house just fine. But right. if somebody, comes in with a full price offer and well david you've got a good analogy for that yeah i know as we were discussing earlier you know um if someone comes in with a full price offer or maybe they come in over asking price and you're super excited as the seller because hey here's more money in your pocket but they have a very savvy agent that's with them and they realize this is you know we're going to be to put an offer in we're going to probably win but then when the inspection comes in, the inspector is going to show all these different deficiencies in the property and we're gonna ask that those be fixed and taken care of because we're, you know, we're paying big money. We're offering not only full asking price, but over. And so the seller is gonna be making more money. So they need to go ahead and take care of this beforehand. And so as a result, we get a better deal trying to buy the home, but it, it's a lot more of a headache for the seller. And then there's all this, like you mentioned before, this back and forth. And once your home is off the market, other realtors are going to tell their their clients, well, it went off the market and then it went back on. Why? There's a story behind everything, right? So why did it go back on the market? And so they're going to be less inclined to show that property to their clients because something's obviously wrong with the property or at least more than likely something happened. And it probably wasn't because the deal fell through because of, uh, of a lending situation. And so people are going to be walking in on their toes, you know, very hesitantly, very cautiously. So um, those are great. Michael, and I know that's just a small, a few small examples of different things that you can do, whether it's the pre-listing inspection or the inspection for a home that someone wants to purchase. You have great insights, just amazing knowledge. It's been a pleasure working with you for the year, through these years. And so if someone wants to reach you, they, I know they have your phone number here, the bottom of the screen, somewhere down here. They can so, somewhere, somewhere in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But, but how could they also reach you? Say if they, they wanted to, like, what's your website? Could you share that information with them? Uh, ICE Inspections, uh, the web address is springsinspectionpro.com. Uh, feel free to reach out to me there or just uh, use the phone number. Call me directly. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for your time today. I hope this was helpful for people, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks. Thanks, David.